One thing I noticed and I like about uh, Anime Studio, or now the new Moho, is that it comes with uh, quite a bit of presets and uh, samples of animation that you can tweak <coughs> and further adapt to your needs. Uh, but this one here just came in handy <laughs> as it's a little walk sequence and I wanted to do a little experiment with this walk sequence. So all I need to do is go to the uh, preview or preview animation <coughs> and check whether that's uh, long enough. I think it's 96 frames. Yep, right here. So there it is, <coughs> quick preview, and let's go and render that out. So that would be export animation. Now my intent is to export it to a format that I can easily work with in, um, in PD Howler. Uh, as an image sequence comes to mind, Targa, so I've changed it. It used to be, by default it's MP4, and while we can currently export to MP4 in, in uh, Howler, I cannot import that yet. Uh, that's probably going to come at some point. We also have AVI, um, so we could possibly save it to an AVI and uh, preferably a non <coughs> an, uh, a non lossy, um, a lossless codec, uh, <coughs> such as Lagarith. Not sure if uh, Moho does that, so we'll have to experiment with that too. But for now, I'm going to stay with the image sequence. And there's a couple of formats. The one that we work with best is Targa. So I would use T uh, TGA Targa files and leave the rest at uh, at default uh, settings and go and so you, s you see i have actually done that already so i'm going to simply create a new folder and <coughs> that will be um, asp anime studio pro um, dash uh, whatever 12 is it version 12 i have maybe 11 i don't remember which one it is you know what <coughs> this will be it, regardless of what version it is this is my animation number two and <coughs> um i need to actually create a folder of that name because uh, then i want to have uh, an image sequence that's just in that folder so that's that's a, a cleaner way to separate it from from other animations so go into that folder and then here you can call it whatever you want frames um, give it an underscore if you must, you know, do stuff like that and go. So now it's going to render each frame. You can see how many CPUs are busy. Uh, it's actually fun to see that on the task manager under performance. If you set the graph to logical processor, you can see uh, how all of the, or most of the processors will be busy. I'm here on a ninth generation i7, which has six cores, and that doubles up with hyperthreading to um, 12 logical cores. All right, so here we are. The animation is done. Let's go check the, uh, the clip. All right, so here we are in the folder that I created with my image sequence. Unfortunately, Windows still doesn't know how to preview a Targa file. That's really sad. Uh, after so many years, uh, you would think that they they could add that i doubt i don't know if there is a copyright issue with that or what the reason is but i can open it in something like earphone view and go uh, s uh, play through that hit the space bar to go from one frame to the next or backspace and then eventually you hit the end of it and you go through the entire animation okay so now these are images that are probably just in 24-bit rgb i don't i doubt there is an alpha channel that contains the outline of it it could possibly be arranged that way most likely uh, i just didn't do anything i just took the default but let's see under image information and you can see oh no look at that it actually does have an alpha channel so the question mark the question here really is whether that alpha channel really is representative of the object to isolate it from the background it might or it might not right so uh if it's done cleverly or intelligently then the background would be isolated as transparent and the alpha channel is where that uh, separation happens we will find out soon enough let's go into uh howler and <coughs> load that image maybe for the first first we'll load just one image we'll open <coughs> not the dragon <coughs> this time we'll go to uh where are we here perhaps uh let's go to documents and output moho there you go okay so let's load the first one 
and here it is let's go see if we enable the alpha uh, selection on yeah now you can see the marching ants they're all around it so the whole so basically the alpha channel is is not used in an intelligent way right now we didn't set it to store or to save the visibility of the pixel the transparency or opacity of it so that's okay what we'll do instead is we will select it right assuming or hoping that this this value of gray is in the background and only in the background that there is no part in the animal or in our dragon or whatever this yep it's a dragon uh let's assume let's hope there is nothing here that has the same gray value one thing we can easily do is select that gray value going to the selection by color key right so now you just click the background here and it picks that gray value now don't give it too much tolerance because it will it will select others too give it the very tight um, selection there so the only thing that is selected is the gray value now you can invert this selection invert and now the only thing you have selected is the dragon right now <coughs> uh, why is it showing a little bit darker purple that's because I have enabled overlay mode if I disable that you'll still see it in its original color and then the only hint about where the selection ends or starts or transitions at the 50% level uh, is those marching ants Right, so that's good enough in many cases. Sometimes it's better to also use the overlay. And then sometimes, in fact, it's so busy. This one is not. But sometimes it's so busy with selection marching ants, you can disable that. But you know you still have your selection in place. The point is that now I can pick this up. I can go to the brush menu and copy that as the current brush. Let me uh, show the marching ants again. And brush, copy, selected as brush. Right, there it is. So now it cleared the selection, but I have it in my brush. Now the brush I have here is at the small size. Let's make it 100%. Oh wait, that's the step distance. There's the opacity, there's the size. It's at quarter size, now it's at full size. All right, so I can store this brush and manage it from there. Uh, you can see the plaid pattern. It's a transparent background, uh, but it's right to the tip of the nose and right to the tip of the tail and right to the tippy toes on the feet and the horn at the top so it's, it's it doesn't have any border any margin around it and what might be nice is to give it a little bit of margin around that so what we'll do is I'll undo this selection uh, I still have it there but I'm gonna go to the brush menu and copy selected with margins now it has a little bit of a margin let's go and select brush and store that one too so now you'll see that uh, if you take a close look here, the, the beak, the nose, right here on the first brush, it's very close to the edge. It's flush right against it, whereas here it has a little bit of a margin around it. That might be a little bit nicer. Both of them contain the same image, though, in terms of uh, the dragon being centered there. Uh, just this one has a little bit of margin. And, of course, we can paint with that, right? So, I mean, that's the whole reason why we put it into the brush is that we can paint it. All right, what else are we going to do with it? Well, let's go find out.